Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and I'm here to share with you my outside the box ideas that I created with the Lots of Pun December 2021 Paper Pumpkin Kit from Stampin' Up. These kits get delivered straight to my mailbox each month and contain everything that I need to make fun, creative paper crafting cards and projects. This month's kit contains supplies for making nine greeting cards, three of three different designs. Each kit includes a publication like this one with directions, full color illustrations, details about the kit, and a link to a how-to video so you can assemble the cards or projects as shown. The kits also include inks and stamps that can be used again and again, even after the consumables are used up. This December kit included an early espresso colored ink pad and this exclusive stamp set. The kits are a Stampin' Up! product, so the colors, images, and supplies always coordinate with many other products that they have. I'll be using some of these in the alternate projects I create today. You can find the items I used listed below and linked to my online store, along with links to learning more about paper pumpkin kits, starting your subscription with me so I can spoil you with exclusive ideas, gifts, and prizes, joining my Paper Pumpkin fan club on Facebook where you can see even more alternate project ideas shared daily, and if you're watching my video on YouTube, a link to my website where I've shared photos of the projects you're going to see today. I received a large clear block with my first paper pumpkin kit to use with all my future stamps. That tool and my scissors are the only extra items I really need for completing my kits as is. But you'll notice that I substitute that block for the ergonomic Stampin' Up! blocks. I also use the larger version of the ink pad and some additional adhesive, such as my Stampin' Seal. You won't need these, but they're available products from Stampin' Up! and they're a bit easier and quicker for me to use while I demonstrate in my video. By the way, if you're looking for ideas for past kits, visit my website at stampyourartout.com. Click on Paper Pumpkin in the top menu, then choose Recent or Older Posts. I've been creating and sharing alternates since March of 2013, when Paper Pumpkin first began. I'm excited to create, so let's get started. One of the things that I like to do is expand the kits so that you're not just making the set number of cards from the kit. This card comes with supplies to make nine cards, but by adding some extra card stock and some extra envelopes and maybe an embellishment or two, you can, you can go beyond and make um, even more cards. So we're gonna take the nine cards, split those pieces up, and we're gonna make 36 cards. Yeah. Now I considered for the cardstock bases, the extra cardstock that we're gonna bring in to make extra card bases, I considered the white. Um, this is our basic white, but the white is slightly different from the white in the paper pumpkin kit. Let me just bring that in really quickly here so you can see. So you can see there's a slightly bluer tone to the kit white. This comes from one of the envelopes here. So I, 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 I put that aside and I said, okay, let's just make a dark card base. And I decided on the early espresso card stock because it is the same color as the ink that comes with the kit. So we're gonna take and um, grab, let's see, we need 18 card bases. Uh, I'm sorry, 18 of the cardstock pieces because when you take and cut them in half to make two card bases, you're going to get 36 cards. So uh, we're going to score first. We're going to bring this cardstock here positioned at the uh, in the vertical direction. We're going to bring it to the four and a quarter inch mark. And then we're going to score right through the middle. And then we're going to turn it this way and we're going to cut. So we're bringing this, the cardstock now this way to the halfway point of 11 at five and a half inches. And we're gonna use our other blade and we're gonna cut. And that's how you can get two card bases that fold in this direction from one of the pieces of early espresso. Now, if you're gonna fold the other direction, then you wanna start this way with your score. So we're gonna position it at five and a half. We're gonna use the scoring blade. And I've marked mine, by the way. I just wrote, used a Sharpie marker and wrote score on mine. So I don't make the mistake of cutting when I don't want to. <laughs> We're going to put a score line this direction and then we're going to rotate it, bring it to the four and a quarter inch mark again, which is halfway um, for the eight and a half direction, and we're going to slice. And now we have two cards that we can um, fold up and, and make this way in the vertical direction. And actually, I say vertical, but you can turn it this way and have your card open up that way. Um, same thing with this one, you could have it 
instead of this way, you could have it turned this way. So it's not really vertical or horizontal, is it? Okay, the next thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to invest in some envelopes. And we have these medium basic white envelopes. To me, the envelopes don't matter as much if they're the exact same white. <laughs> um, so these are our basic white, and they're the same as our cardstock. You'll want to get one pack, which includes 40 envelopes, and you, again, only need 36. So you'll actually have uh, four envelopes to use elsewhere, or you could use these as white cardstock layers if you cut into them. And then you'll need an embellishment, and I seriously have not decided on my embellishment yet. I have a couple in mind, but we need to put together the cards first, and then we'll embellish them. So let's first take a look at the pieces that were assigned to each card originally. So for this card here, the one with the egg and toast on it, you had these three thought bubbles, this fun little um, early espresso scalloped um, edge, you had a large vellum circle, the toast, the egg, this card base, and I just associated this envelope with it, not sure why. And then um, this one, oh, probably because it ended up being the only envelope left, I'll, sh I'll show you. And then we had this card, um, which included this piece here, and the, um, the, vellum, the vellum rectangle, the long blue rectangle piece, this red scallop piece, the cherry um, card base, and then this envelope, which I thought went well with the cherry card because the red and red. And then we had this third card, and this one had the crumb cake colored um, strip. Um, actually, lots of strips. The striped one in multicolors, the striped one that was in the early espresso, another blue sentiment kind of strip, the vellum circle, the hello, and the banana. And I put that together with the envelope that also had that fun little um, design right there. <laughs> you had extra pieces too. Stampin' Up! provided some extra pieces in the kit, and probably if you made mistakes or just because these guys are super cute. I don't know, but you got an extra piece of fruit and you got the inside of that frame an extra thought bubble and an extra blue and plus there's a couple others but they don't divide out evenly between three sets but all of these pieces that I just shared you have enough um, to play around with with three different sets of cards from these so these are the three original sets plus the extras that we have also three extras of um, and then uh, what I did again is I took and I uh, quadrupled the cards in the kit. Did I say that yet? I don't even know. So I took and I made um, 36 cards from the nine. So we're going to take the three, divide them out. Three times four is 12. So we're going to take these pieces for the three cards and we're going to turn them into 12 cards. Then what you do after that is you just take the other supplies that are in your kit and you will then make these same cards three more times. So 12 times three is 36. I know, lots of math, but just believe me, <laughs> it's gonna be fun. All right, so we're gonna start with um, one of the card bases that's really tall, and we're gonna bring in that frame. We're gonna bring in this vellum piece here, um, that blue strip, and we're also going to need an interior piece. So if we're gonna have um, early espresso or dark card bases. We need to have something on the, oh, and we need the egg. Where's the egg? Here's the egg. We need an egg. And we need something on the inside where we can write on our card. So what I did is I took one of the card bases and I grabbed this card base and I cut it in half. Actually, I did this with all the card bases. Um, I cut it in half and then I cut this half in half. And I ended up with this piece here okay so this measures two and three quarter inches by four and a quarter inches and that i flipped over and used on the inside now you could certainly because you have yellow on your egg you could certainly use the yellow for the inside but i think that this is a really really strong yellow compared to the one on the front so i'm choosing the white side for the inside of our card we need to stamp our sentiment so we're going to stamp on here the excellent, excellent day one. We have so many sentiments. In fact, there are 12 on here. Um, actually, one, two, three. There's actually 13 on here, including the high. And then you have that hello that comes in the kit, this one here. So you actually have four, 
14 different sentiments to choose from. We're going to use, um, again, the one that says excellent day. So you want to pull it out. You're going to flip it so that it lies nice and straight. And then you're going to take your block and you're just going to go right down on top of it to pick it up. And that way it won't be curvy or anything. You're going to pull out your ink and we're going to stamp directly onto our blue piece. Now, if, if you want to, you can flip it over and stamp on the white piece, the white side. But we have lots of blue in here, so we'll just stick with the blue. There we go. Now this, we'll flip over. We'll add either glue dots to the back side, or if you can get um, another kind of adhesive back there, that's totally great. I'm just going to work with the glue dots on here for this card. So we're just going to put a couple back here. I'm using the Take Your Pick tool. It's a handy tool that you can get from Stampin' Up. Um, it's great for transferring embellishments. It's great for poking holes. Um, there's other attachments. There's a, You can pull out, um, pull out and put on different pieces and stuff. There's a spatula. There's some stylus ends. And you can even put on the, um, the die cutting brush. So let's place this on top of our early espresso cardstock so we can see it a little bit better. And we're going to just frame this blue piece with the vellum piece, like that. The vellum really shows up on darker cardstock a lot better. Okay, then we're going to place, we're just going to position our egg, I'm sorry, yeah, our egg in our frame. So let's close this up. Let's grab our bone folder really quick here. Give this a good crease so it sits still. <laughs> and we're going to place that up towards the top. And we're just placing it. We're not going to actually stick it down yet. We're going to gra grab our egg and put that where we want it. And grab this piece and put that where we want it. And because I like this positioning, I'm going to go ahead and adhere my egg. I'm bringing in my seal for quickness. And we'll just set that down like that. And then this piece is going to go up on dimensionals. So we'll grab our dimensionals. We do have extra dimensionals in um, available in the online store. So if you decide you love these and you're new to paper pumpkin kits and you haven't built up a collection yet, um, this would be a great thing to get if you need to. Otherwise, you will get these. Um, several of these over the months and then we'll just place that over the top of this it creates a fun shadow and then on the inside oh we haven't taped that down yet let's do that and you know what your adhesive does show through vellum so you can either again be really careful with your larger wider seal adhesive or you can add more of these glue dots from the kit they're putzier but they they do the job with small pieces, that's for sure. And then on the inside, we'll just place our area where we can write. You could totally embellish this if you want to. You could grab your images from the stamp set and you could stamp down your egg. In fact, maybe I should do that. I should do that. Okay, pretend I didn't put adhesive on the back yet. It's going to stick to my table. But you know what? We forgot to stamp on our egg, too. We should have stamped on our egg, Rachel. I know. I'm going to grab another block here, ink that up. <laughs> We're going to stamp down here. See, that's what happens. <laughs> I'm creating as we're going. This is what I do often in my videos. I just create as I go. All right, we have to do our outline of our egg because it'll stand out more. This does line up, so you just have to kind of twist it until it lines up right. And then you're going to go right down on top of it in the middle. It's going to make that egg. Oh, there we go. Look at that egg. It's definitely an egg now. It actually looks kind of like a flower before we did that. And if you add a stem, a little like a piece of green um, cardstock that's a strip, you could make that look like a flower. <laughs> so there, we've got that done and we will add embellishments to all these cards at the end, but let's go on to our next card. For our next card, we're going to need um, this portion of the card that we had cut 
and we have one more yellow, but we're not going to use this one. We're actually going to save this one for our last card. So I'm going to set that one aside. Instead, for the inside white piece, we're going to cut into an envelope. So let me just demonstrate that. It's pretty easy. Instead of doing like, you know, trying to separate this out and tear it, uh, we're going to do a little quick snip on each side. You can see that the inside of this envelope is lined all the way through. So if you love that design, you have designer paper once you open this up. So we're going to place it in our trimmer so that we have about an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch beyond. And we're going to slice coming down from the top because you don't want to go into an edge that's not straight. Um, so we went into this edge instead as we pulled our blade. We're going to do the same thing in the other direction. So place it up here so you have your straight edge along the top of your trimmer. Start your blade up here. Again, if we start down here, sometimes you can, you know, fray your cardstock a bit. So we're going to slice coming down. And now we have a sixteenth of an inch off on each edge. When you're done, you can open it up and you have all of this as designer paper. So we're going to cut into this. We're going to cut so that we're trimming um, just inside the score line. When you have a score line that's already folded like on an envelope, it does create a little bit more fraying when you trim into it. I'll flip it this way so you can see better. So we're going to position it so we're either just inside or just outside that um, little mark like that. And we're going to cut. And you also want to have a really sharp blade. If you don't have a sharp blade on your trimmer, you still may end up with a little bit of fraying. Okay, so <laughs> There, I demonstrated the fraying. That's what happens when you don't have a really sharp blade. Um, we're going to cut this piece now so that it is um, three and a quarter inches wide. So we're going to first trim off this little bit. And I zoomed in a bit so you could see what I'm talking about. So we're going to trim off this piece and this piece, but we have to bring that place where the paper um, starts to curve down. We need to cut right there. So we're bringing those little corners right into that groove and we're going to trim and that will cut off all of this rounded stuff. Okay, And then we're going to flip it around and we're going to cut so that it's at the three and a quarter inch mark. So you do have a lot of a lot of leeway here. Not a ton but a lot so we just trimmed it that way. And then you've got these little edges here now you could leave it as is if you want to, but if you're going to use the yellow side, you're going to see this, right? So we're just going to go ahead and trim um, about a half inch in on one end. And what happens is this just kind of loosens up. And now this is one flat piece here, and then we're going to trim a half, actually we're not going to trim a half an inch the other way. We're going to position it so we're at five and a half in this direction which is just over a half inch on this side. And we're going to trim it like that. Okay. Now, if you happen to have slightly different me measurements, it's totally fine. It's an inside layer. We can use it this way or we can use it this way. It could even be an outside layer if you want to do your cards differently. We're going to use it as a yellow layer for this card. Um, the other pieces of your envelope, you're going to trim up a little differently. You're going to trim them. Again, you've got this score line here. It has not been folded yet, so it doesn't matter if you're right on the score line or not. You could do that if you want to. And then we've got this large piece. Now this large piece, um, you can see, uh, would actually be slightly larger than the card because it's an envelope base. You can see the yellow around there. We're just going to cut this in half. It's about five and a half inches tall. So we're going to trim it this way. And we've got now a couple in, more inside layers. They're not the exact same size as this piece here, but that's totally fine. Again, your measurements can be different. This piece here, we're going to trim differently as well. And we'll do that when we get to it. So here are the two small pieces. This is the large one. We're going to save a small and a large for our next card. We're going to use one of the small ones for the inside of this piece. Again, we're going to use this front here. We're going to use a blue strip and we're going to bring in some stamps. We're going to bring in the cherry, um, the cherry, cherry um, pear. We're going to bring in the sad face. We're going to bring in these little speckles and we're going to bring in one of the sentiments that says, 
um, I'm sorry, it's the pits. So let's first stamp that onto our blue strip. And I want this piece to come out like that. So we're gonna stamp our cherries like that. And then we'll do some speckles, just cause we can. I love the speckle stamp. This is great, I mean, this would be a great stamp to bring into any set that you have. Do a couple more over here, and maybe some up through here. And just rotate it so you have a different look for the speckles each time. There we go. And then we need to do our sad face, our sad faces within the cherries. <laughs> oh, so fun. The food with personalities. Let's bring this up on dimensionals. So um, in the kit, they do give the little tip where you can take your scissors and you can cut these dimensionals in half and then you get skinnier versions of them. So that's what we're gonna do for this strip. So fun. That will go on the front of our card. Now this is cut to the exact same size as the front of the card, which is fine. You can trim up, but I loved the yellow edge around here. I love there was a colored edge around all the, the card fronts, and I wanted to maintain that, so I thought it's not a big deal if we don't see a brown edge on the front of our card because we've got brown in the ink. So we're just going to adhere it directly down to the front with no edge. There might be a tiny peak coming out just because of you know the difference between how you cut your cards, but let's place that on here. There we go. So you can see just a tiny little bit of brown. We'll open it up, and I want the yellow showing on this one because, of course, we have yellow, that nice dark yellow on the front edge too, right? And this is definitely light enough to, to write on, to color on. So we'll add embellishments to that one, but that is the second card. The next one involves the other two pieces from the envelope that we had just cut. We've also got this little tiny strip here, um, the, the blue strip flipped over to the white side, and through the magic of television slash video, <laughs> I've already stamped my Peel Better Soon on the white side, and I've flipped these over and laid, I put them right next to each other and added the glue dots so that it's easier to just put the whole piece on at once. That scallop edge piece is super skinny, and so putting it on with just the glue dots alone um, is gonna be tough. If you put it side by side, it works really well. And we're just gonna lift that whole piece up and place it down here in the lower left. We'll ink up our banana, because of course, peel better, you know, you need a banana. And we'll just stamp that down like that. We could put a sad face in there if we wanted to. This will go on the front of our card. Do you see this? There's a little exposed edge here. That means that needs to get flipped over. There we go. And then we'll have the yellow on the inside of this one. I know that pretty striped paper is disappearing. That's why, of course, if you see another way to do these cards differently, think outside the box and do that, right? So this one still needs to get some embellishments on it. You could stamp your sad face in there if you want to, but I'm gonna set that aside and we're gonna move on to the fourth card. For the fourth one, we're gonna bring in this flap here. And now, um, and oh, the, the card base, we need the card base. So this card could be positioned, the design on the card could be positioned a couple different ways. We could either do it like this and have our striped strip going, strip going across like that, or we could turn it this way. But do you see the issue here is that you're going to have a little bit of brown showing on either side. So whatever floats your boat. You can also leave this 
um, sticky edge here exposed, but if you do happen to get any water droplets on there or whatever, it will get sticky like an envelope flap. So I'm going to trim that off. I'm just going to line it up in here. And you don't have a flat surface up here to place it into your trimmer, so you have to use these lines on your trimmer to kind of guide you. And I'm bringing it to the um, 1 and 3 8 inch mark. So there's that. You still have a, a pretty wide strip here. Um, if you, again, if you don't want that little brown edge showing or the corners down there, you could trim. It looks like we have to trim in to those corners. It's about a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you don't want to push your blade up into this piece here. Instead, you want to pull down from the top. So we'll do that. And then on this side, we can push because we don't want to go into a, an edge like that. So we're just going to line that up and go in that direction. And now we have our straight strip that we can place again, either like this, or we could trim it even further in and go like that. But I'm going to go in this direction. And now we're using the stripe side. Yay! And the other pieces, we're going to use one of the toast pieces, and we're going to use this um, little speech bubble. This is going to get stamped with the sentiment that says, um, which one is it? A toast to you. And we, of course, need to cover up that portion there, so let's just do that and make sure that we have room for the rest. It looks like we have to put it off to the right. And that leaves room for a tilted piece of toast. We need to do our toast. So I made a couple changes here. I decided to shift this down so it's a half an inch from the bottom. And I also realized that you can trim this off. If you don't want that there, just trim it off. And that way we have a little bit more leeway for our toast. So I'm going to now, instead of having it up here, I can have it more down here, overlapping the two areas. I'm going to position it like that, and then I'm going to put this up on a dimensional so it sits a little higher and has that shadow behind it. And we can place that right there. And now it looks much more balanced. Again, we can add dimensionals to it. I'm sorry, embellishments to it. So there is our next card. Let's go on to the cherry card. This one involves... Um, one of these little card base pieces like this. So there's, um, this one came from the one with the, let's see, it's this one here. So again, cut right down the middle and then cut that piece in half. And you've got these. We're going to need one of those. We also need the front portion of the other card. So you can see we've got the blue and the blue. We need cherries. And we're going to use some of the embellishments from the kit right now in this one because we know that how they're going to be added. This will go on the inside and we're going to have the um, white up because the blue isn't real strong in here. So let's just flip that over for the white side. We're going to use the phrase, I pick you. And we're going to stamp that up towards the middle of this circle like that. Now we can place this. Oh, we want to stamp it. I'm going to stamp the cherries. And you know what I discovered on this this uh, last card with the toast is that I could hardly see the white edge against my grid paper, so I'm going to just flip my card over and I can line the cherries back up a little bit better than I did with the toast, although I did okay with the toast. Okay. And now we can take and add dimensionals to the back side. Place that on the front like that. So sweet. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We have dimensionals. I mentioned that we were going to grab ones that are from the kit. Some embellishments, sorry. So we've got this large heart and this small heart. And we're just going to take and make it balanced in the other direction with a red heart they are 
tiny. They are tiny to work with. This tool is great for that. There we go. I pick you. So sweet. Okay, next card. For the next, uh, I think it's three cards, we're going to cut into the envelope that has the red polka dots. And you'll do it the same way you did the other one. So I've got all those pieces here. We're going to be using the two smaller ones from the main portion of the envelope first. But before we actually um, put together the, the cards, um, I forgot, on this one here it needs an inside. I was looking, I was trying to figure out why I had this extra um, portion of this card, and that is why. <laughs> Silly me. So that one is going to go on the inside. I believe it's just with the white showing. Yes, the white. Again, you could do blue if you wanted to, but I felt like it wasn't quite enough blue on the front to have a blue inside. So we're going to go with white. Sorry, we backtracked. Okay, now we can go ahead with the next couple cards. For So the three, three cards involve the envelope pieces, but we're going to do the first two with the skinny ones. And you can see I've kind of divided up my, my elements here. We need to cut this piece in half. So this comes from that card base. And we're going to cut that in half. And it is five and a half inches tall, so we're going to cut that at two and three quarter inches. And I know we're not going to have that, oops, we're not going to have that blue edge around here. You could totally, you know, come up with a blue edge if you want to place it right in the middle of your card. But I thought, let's just get creative, use what we have. We're going to use the hamburger fold card first. This is the hot dog bun fold. <laughs> If you're thinking of hot dogs and hamburgers, I don't know. It's just something I used to use in teaching. So we're going to do one in this style and one in this style. For this one, we're going to place our piece like that. So we'll just go ahead and adhere that into our card on the front. Like that. Right up to the edge. So it looks like it's peeking out, right? Then we're going to place this piece on next and we're just going to put it flat down onto this piece here and we're going to position it in the, I think it's the middle, let me peek at my, yes, it's somewhat in the middle, we're actually going to go down a little bit. And you can see that there's lines on here, um, I think you can see them pretty well, but let's just zoom in a tad. You can see that there's lines on here and what I want to do is I want to position it so that the lines are lining up. Um, I think it's going to look better if we have it all lined up. So there's that look. Then we've got the egg, and the egg we need to stamp again. It'll stand out more if we stamp it. Um, and then we'll stamp the sentiment that says, excited for you. Excited. So funny. Maybe this one should have had a smiley face because we're having the egg say it. The egg is saying this one, so it should have had a face. Oh well, mine doesn't. I changed my mind. I want the smiley face. And you know what? I put the dimensional right in the middle here, so I tested it out and I kind of pushed without ink, and it looks like it's going to work. So there we go. Let's give it a try. Yay. That does make more sense to have a little smiley face on the egg yolk. Okay, so there's the next. Oh, and then the inside. We need the inside. Again, a very um, dominant print, and I didn't want that dominant of a print. Because this lined up on this edge, we're going to do the same thing on the inside here. And those pieces are approximately the same size, so it will look really great when you open it up. There's the place to write. Let's go with the longer piece now. And for this one, we are going to offset it onto this side instead. And on this one, it's going to say, thanks a bunch. This sentiment alone makes me wish that we had multiple bananas. Um, but we're just going to use one for this one. 
So I am recording this video, by the way, on December 23rd, which is the day before a holiday I like to celebrate here at our house, uh, Christmas Eve. <laughs> Christmas is big at our house. And so because of that, and you know what, I'm looking at the face here. I'm making sure that the face looks like it's going the right direction here, not necessarily thinking of the banana as much. Um, and so everyone is still asleep at our house because the kids are off school trying to do this really early in the morning because normally I like to have my video out by the 23rd, but I got my kit a little later. I think holiday cards, you know, everybody putting things in the mail right now is, is um, causing a little undue stress on the <laughs> post office. And so, um, yeah, so normally my video would be released by now and I'd have my kit, but I got my kit two, let's see, a day and a half ago. So um, I really, just have been starting to create with it. We'll put this piece on the inside. So I'm hurrying as fast as I can. I'm trying to see if I can get this posted tomorrow. I might not. It might be, have to be a Christmas Day one, but we'll see. So I still have to edit the video, take photos, edit the photos. Um, takes a little bit of work. <laughs> okay, there's that so far without the embellishments. We're on the eighth card now, and we're gonna use the other portions of that envelope, and we're actually just, just gonna leave this one as is. <laughs> it looks, um, it, it's just gonna give it a nice fun look. So we'll use one of these card bases, fold it, give it a good crease, and we're gonna place it onto the front of our card, like so, with this strip coming out like that, and with the cherries kind of like that, and we need to trim up the edges after we put it on. After we put it on, yep, that's what we'll do. See, again, thinking as we're going. And the sticky for the envelope is on this side, so that's why we can use the whole flap, make it kind of look like a little hill. We've got a notch there of something. We'll just trim that off. I'm gonna put it about a half an inch from the bottom. Center it, looks good, trim off the edges. Flipping it over allows you to see the extended portion that you're trimming off, and you can line it up easier and trim it better. So there's that. We'll add this strip. This will just go flat onto the front, like so. And then we're gonna stamp our words. We're going to place this one here, but we're going to stamp our words right above this. So I think we'll stamp it so it's close to the middle of the card, but to the right side of this strip. And let's add, should we add a heart? Yeah, I think we will. We'll add a heart right over here just to kind of give it a little bit more balance. Um, dimensionals. I've already stamped the cherry. There's that. And then on the inside, we'll place the blue layer. So we really didn't use the red portion of this envelope layer at all. It, it definitely was a fun one, but again, kind of loud for the designs I was coming up with. So I had to pick and choose, but that's, you have a choice. There's always two sides to most papers. Well, there's two sides to every paper. Okay, the next one. <laughs> but you might have white on one and white on the other. Okay, so the next one's gonna be using the toast, um, the extra piece of toast. And then this one comes from the envelope that has the speckles, because that one is not totally um, printed all the way. Here, I'll show you that one. So if you open that up, you can see that the printing only goes down so far. So we're using the front portion from this part of the envelope. Okay, and that will go on the inside and we'll have these pieces on the outside. I want this to go right along the top edge with our toast, kind of like that. So we're gonna flip it over, we're gonna lay it down and we're going to add glue dots. So again, if you just hold them right close together, 
you can add a glue dot, hold it in place, add another one, I think three will be good. And that's how you can get that connected. I didn't really show that the first time, did I? There's another little punched section there. Okay, and then we can just take and run um, seal adhesive along the rest of this. Or you can use glue dots from the kit if that's what you have. Take off the backings. And this one's going to say, I loaf you. R, R, R. These are so funny, or punny, right? I also think I need a couple hearts. Oh, so sweet. That one looks good all by itself. No embellishments necessary. Okay, next card. This is where we're getting into the envelope that we had cut for the last card but now we've got the flat portion of it. We've also got this green um, portion from the card that had the, oh gosh, where is it now? This one here, the cherry, right? There's the other two pieces there, and we need one of them. We're gonna place this envelope flap onto the card in this direction. So you can see we can trim off a little bit. We're gonna trim off about 5 eighths of an inch um, to start with. We might have to trim off a little bit more, but for now that's where we're going to go to. Flip it over so we've got the... there we go. So about five-eighths of an inch on each end, and that way we can see how far up we can trim to get this adhesive section off. You can just line it up in your trimmer so that you're seeing the adhesive where it's not on the envelope flap and where it is, connect right with the channel of the trimmer. And we're going to trim right there, and that way we can make this piece a little bit bigger. There we go. And now we can adhere this to the front of our card. We are going to place this little speech bubble here. Oops, already sticking it down in the banana about there, but I do like it down on the card. So let's place it about an inch from the bottom. That will be good. I'm using my grid paper. And you see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm uh, lining up about four little grid paper pieces, um, little sections, square sections. I suppose I could have lined it up with one, one side only. Oh well, that's okay. So we're trimming off two different sides. Okay, so there's that. We're going to stamp our sentiment in the middle. And I want the one that says, what does it say here? Celebrate Go Bananas. In fact, let's bring in the speckles. And we'll grab our C size block. That's a little bit easier to deal with. We need our banana. Put this up on dimensionals, and we will not personify it. That's a fun word, right? That means giving it human traits. And we'll add this. We need three dimensionals on this long one. So you may have to invest in more dimensionals. You can see how many I'm going through just with the 12 cards that I'm making from the three card bases. Um, so again, if you're going to be tripling the cards in, no, yeah, tripling, what are we doing? Three times, no, we're quadrupling. <laughs> so if you're going to be quadrupling the cards in the kit, you may need to invest in some dimensionals. Okay, so there's that. Oh, we do have to personify him because he's talking. Or we could just trim this off. Do we want to trim it off? Yeah, we'll trim it off there. <laughs> There's that one. Okay, next. Oh, we need the inside. I'm going to use the real greenish side too instead of just the white because there's some green little blobs here 
and I think it would look fun with the green in there. So there we go. There's that one. The next card, this is the, will this be the 11th card? On the 11th card, we're going to be using this portion of the envelope on the front. And I have trimmed it down so it's four inches by five and a quarter inches. It's a perfect layer for the front of this card. We'll go ahead and add that. Normally I say stamp and then add just in case you make a mistake, but we don't have this design on another piece. So we're just going to have to trust that we can stamp, which works pretty well with clear stamps. You can see through them, you know where they're going to go. Um, this piece here we're going to add to the front as well. So we will need some of those glue dots from the kit. And we're just going to add that strip along the bottom here. This is where we're going to stamp our sentiment, let's grow mold together. Now I know a lot of us don't like mold. I'm actually allergic to mold. Um, and I know some people react to it even more. Uh, it depends on the mold, right? So, uh, but mold, see I'm reading Outlander. And mold actually creates penicillin, doesn't it? <laughs> so it can be a good thing too. Anyways, there's our sentiment piece, our image right there. And we're going to stamp a couple pieces of bread. We're going to stamp one about here. And one about here. They're up into the moldy area. And then we're going to put our little hearts up there. So cute, such a cute little heart, but you definitely need a tool like this. There we go, there's that. And then we'll put the faces on. Should we add the glasses? I think so. I think so. Because if it's referring to age, many of us need help with our vision as we age, right? I know I do. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. Okay, so there's our other card. <laughs> All right, and then the last one is going to be using that hello piece and the vellum circles. Oh, we got to put the inside in. I forgot the inside for that last card. We still have embellishing, so don't go away yet. Okay, then for this card, we're going to use that last yellow piece. We're going to use the white side of it for the inside. We'll just do this now so we don't forget. Oh, and we're positioning it this way. <clears throat> Our hello, I've already put um, some glue dots on the back. Let's finish that up. If you get to an edge where it's um, difficult to put the glue dot in there, like, let me show you here, like down in, maybe, let's just put one right here. Okay. So you see what I'm doing there? It's kind of coming through to the other side. When you peel off the backing for that, you can take and get in there and just fold it back onto itself and then it will disappear from the front. It won't be in view anymore. Okay, we're gonna put this in the middle of our vellum circle, our large one. Then we also need to adhere it to this circle. So to do that, because I love that look, right, where it's layered together like that. So to do that, you can see we need some more glue dots behind the hello part. So now we can flip it over and we can put adhesive on the back side again, on the back side of the word hello. And we'll just place that on the front with our hello going in the right direction, not tilted or anything. And that's going to hold that all down. Now we'll also have some embellishments on this, which I'm going to work with next because this is our 12th card. Um, this is another optional adhesive. I use this often when I do tinier pieces. Uh, but I just wanted to show you the glue dot way because I oftentimes don't use the glue dots in my videos. So these are the embellishments that come with the kit. You get this twine, kind of in a crumb cake color, and then you get a sheet of these little um, sticky things, which we've already used the hearts for. You can see I divided them into three separate sections. So if we had 
uh, I think it was seven large hearts and seven small hearts. You could really only get, um, if you divide seven by three, you get two sets with some remainder. So I used two sets on cards already. Um, same thing with these over here. I think you get, let's see, four times five, they get 20 of them. 20 divided by three is just under seven. So there were six of these little yellow ones and six blue ones that I allotted for cards for this first set. So let's just bring in one of the cards that I used the heart stickers on. This one I think is simple and sweet and perfect all by itself. I'm not going to change anything on that. I'm not going to add anything. If you wanted to, you could put smiley faces on your cherries, but I did not want to personify my cherries on that card. For this card, um, I'm going to use the, the twine. And if I took that twine, I rolled it, which I did, I took the twine and I unrolled the whole thing and I measured it. And on my roll, I have about um, 27 times three inches of this and so I took 27 inches of it and I'm using it all on this card here. <laughs> I just thought it would look really great with this card so I'm going to shift my twine over a little bit here. There we go. I just double wrapped it and I'm going to tie it in a knot. With twine I recommend tying in a knot first just to secure it because it is so, so thin. After you do that, you can adjust your twine, you know, like make it come, you know, stretch out like that or whatever, or shift it if you need to. We're gonna go ahead and tie our bow. I like the full length on this whole card. I think having um, a, a long strip like this that you can tie into a bow is just kind of perfect, I guess. I'm having a hard time grabbing it. It's so skinny. <laughs> and you could trim the ends, but I like to leave those ends as is. Like that. It's so cute. So cute. I love that card. So that one's done. This is where I added um, three yellow and three blue. Remember, I had six of each. So I did three of blue, three of yellow on here to decorate that one up. It just looks like confetti going through the air. So that one's now done. I also added the other three blue and three yellow onto this card, but I was looking at this thinking, I really need to add some red to those cherries. So I'm bringing in watercolor pencils. Now we have two sets. We have assortment one and assortment two. Um, this one has the cherry cobbler color, which I thought was a little bit better than the real red from the other one. So I'm bringing in the cherry cobbler color. I'm also bringing in what's called a blender pen. We have blending brushes, we have blends markers, which are alcohol based, and then we have a blending or a blender pen. Blender pens are great for watercolor based inks, um, such as your classic inks or your watercolor pencils. And so we're going to take and just give a little bit of red tinge to our cherries. And I'm just coloring nice and dark on the upper left corner of each because I want to give it some shading. And this here is where the shine is. So I figure if this side is shiny, this side is darker. And so we've done that. And now we're going to come in with the blending, or I'm sorry, the blender pen. And we're going to grab that ink. We're going to kind of swirl it around. And then as we come out, you can see it gets lighter and lighter. And if you need to, you can add more pencil. But now we've got red cherries. That's exactly what I wanted. They're not perfectly red. I mean, they have kind of a overlapping green tone to them, but they don't look healthy. <laughs> and that kind of goes with the the sentiment, right? I'm sorry, that's the pits. So if you wanted to add a little bit of color to your cherries, you could do that. You could also do it with the green up here. And so I've pulled out the granny apple green. We're just going to brighten up this green leaf a little bit. Now, when you change colors, you do have to run it until it runs clear, and then you can come in and use another color with it. So now we've got that card done. We're going to keep the watercolor pencils out because this is another one where it was bugging me. 
I wanted moldy bread. <laughs> I want a little bit of mold on there, but it also looks like it's transparent bread. So we're gonna add um, some early espresso, which comes from the other pack of pencils. So we'll put our cherry and our apple, granny apple green away, and we're gonna bring in our other set of pencils that involves the early espresso color. So if you wanted to collect all the colors, you just need to get two sets. We're gonna come in, and this time I think, let's refer to another card that has the bread on it. We can use that kind of as a guide for coloring. So let us take this one here. And you can see that this edge over here is the darkest. So we're gonna start with the darkest area and we're gonna add our color. And there's just a little bit of darkness around the edges of that card as well. We'll put that back over there. So I did that along the edges and then I'm gonna kind of just lightly go through here and not where the glasses are. I'm gonna avoid the glasses. Okay, now we'll run this clear and we'll start with this edge here. Start with the darkest. And oh, there we go, we're going up through. And you can over blend just so, you know, just a little warning. You don't want to keep on going um, back and forth and back and forth because eventually this, uh, the liquid that's in this will start to soften the cardstock and, or the paper, and it'll get pilling on it, you know, where the little bits of paper are starting to pull up. So that's why I'm working pretty fast. I'm grabbing the dark color first, like I did before, and then I'm coming in around the edges, grabbing that color. And again, I'm working pretty fast to get that color to blend through here. Working with the darkest edges first, grabbing the color. And the green will still seep through because it's we're doing blending with this. So you still have that, you know, moldier look to the bread. That's such a cute card. I should give that to my husband. <laughs> All right, the next one. The next one is going to involve some embellishments called Artistry Bloom Adhesive Back Sequins. And I thought that these were great because they have different colors. There's four different colors. We're gonna start with the yellowish one and we're gonna fancy this up because this is probably the plainest card that I've done on this set. I, I, did not want to settle with just this, but it's amazing because once you add a few little embellishments like this, let's see here, we'll add one there. It's just amazing how just a little bit of a sparkle can make your card come alive. Yeah, see, it's bright and cheerful now. It's got a little bit of pizzazz to it. So there's our Peel Better Soon card. Let's do the same thing with this one, although it doesn't need too much, but just a couple little um, yellow sequins. These are self-adhesive, which is great. So you don't have to worry about any glue. And there's that one. Now we're gonna move into the second color that's in here. We have, oops, we have blues. And I'll just use up the sheet first. We have blue sequins, yellow sequins. So there's that card. And then we're gonna do this one with a little bit of blue as well. There's that one. <laughs> and now we'll move into our third color that we have in this embellishment pack. You actually get one sheet of each of these, but I've got so many leftovers. See, obviously I like buying them. <laughs> so on this one, we'll use the pinkish, reddish, purplish, the one that has like lots of different colors, but it's more on the pinkish purplish side. And you could definitely add more because this one's obvi obviously a celebratory card, a toast to your success. OK, 
Okay, on this one, I don't know if we really need any on this one. I stopped the video so I could put some thought into it and I actually covered up that heart and just put two right there, a large and a small. And I think that that looks pretty darn good. So I'm gonna go with that. The next card and the last one is this one here. So we're gonna pull in the orangish color. There's an orange, a yellow, the pinkish, and the blue. And we're just gonna kinda of go a little crazy now. And that one's nice and colorful and cheerful, just with lots of color on it. Yay! So with your basic tools and with these items here, the Early Espresso cardstock, the um, basic white medium envelopes, a pack of each, watercolor pencils and a blending brush, and the Artistry Blooms self-adhesive sequins, you can turn your three cards into 12. You can quadruple the cards in your kit just in that way. Um, I'm, I usually share a little bit more, but again, it's really close to Christmas time, and so you'll just have to watch for future blog posts to see more ideas. Now that you've watched my video, I hope that you can see that there's so much more to these kits than meets the eye. With just a few extra supplies and some imagination, you can go beyond and make so much more. Want to give these paper ki pumpkin kits a try? They are just $22 plus tax per month in the U.S. Shipping is included. You control which months you get your kits, and there's no commitment or obligation. And by clicking on my personalized link below and starting your subscription with me as your demonstrator, you'll have access to my exclusive Paper Pumpkin Project ideas too. So what's in store next month? The Hugs and Kisses Paper Pumpkin Kit. This is the January kit. You want to be subscribed by January 10th. And this kit is not bound to just Valentine's Day. It works for all love occasions year round, like anniversaries, weddings, birthdays, and those just because days. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. To access Paper Pumpkin Kit ideas that I'll share in the future, be sure that you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and my website because I share even more each month in other special blog posts. In fact, click on my website link below so that you can access the visual supply list and view close-up photos of all these cards I shared today. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.